Years later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on The Perf Host. It was released on July 1st, 2011, so does a whole- What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> May, Thursday. What year? No, what? Year is it? When you look at this film on Google and whatnot, the date is 2010. It was one of those films on like film festivals and its first initial release was 2010, but to like the public and its like theatrical release or something like that, it's July 1st, 2011. So this is a film that I think has wasted potential. You know, you hear that word thrown around a lot, wasted potential. This is one of those films where I think the movie pulls a rug from under you, but not in a good way. I definitely don't like it. Undoes everything in the movie kind of. Tension building moment. And there's a like, surprise. It was all a joke. That's what it felt like. And just, I was on board with it. And if the film maker was committed to this idea and its ending i think i would have really loved this movie because i did like it up to that point that twist or reveal where it's like all right this is one of those movies that's somewhat ruined by the reveal I forgot all of the characters names because i didn't know them by as criminal and suburban guy but essentially the story is about this criminal who's running away who gets hurt and he gets in the suburban neighborhood and he just so happens to knock on the wrong door and wrong house to go inside the wrong house and meet this guy who looks like a normal suburban guy but this movie plays on the fact that looks can be very deceiving and what you see on the outside Side, might not be on the inside it's that type of movie and i was on board with it because you're not really for both sides at all really he's done some bad things he's like a escape prisoner i think or something like that he has like a felony and then there's scenes of flashbacks of him with his girl and film trying to make you care about him but i just don't really care because suburban guy who looks so nice and just quiet he's the best part because he's just a psychopath he's crazy he's seen people in his head he wants this criminal to be a part of his friend gathering but all of it is just within his own head not on the wrong house so that's an interesting aspect an interesting premise and they commit to that mostly and so you kind of on the edge of your seat kind of because you don't really care about the, the guy that's getting tied up but you care about this other guy crazy in his head talking to like invisible people i was really liking it i was like damn this is a, this is good shit yo this is like okay so they so simple one contained movie i like those it usually gets a filmmaker to be creative think on the spot and with the limited things and equipments that they have and money and budget that's why i really like these like one shot or not one shot but like one location spot movies that's when a filmmaker's creativeness comes out now i don't think the film tells you this or maybe it did again i watch these movies at night which you should never do i always say this on my channel I just watch movies at night when I'm asleep. I don't know why I do that. I just do and I forget shit. So don't do that, all right? That's like kind of my habit. You don't know if these people in his head are people that he's killed or just people that he's made up or his past friends and he just made them up. I also like that it's kept hidden. It's kind of like the Michael Myers. You don't really want to know his backstory. Same thing for this guy, who or what these people are to him. Maybe it's his past childhood friends, his past friends that he's killed. He even has like photographs, people that he's supposedly killed. And I say supposedly because, you know, pussy why not? Pulling the rug out of under you. But it was like, oh, this is creepy. Good shit, right? But then guess what? Guess what, man? They just pulled the rug out. Turns out, not only he's like a part of like the police department, I think he's in the know of the police department in his area, but he's like a special makeup artist guy. And so we see this criminal outside of his house and his neck, it was just all makeup. And all the photos and whatnot was all just makeups and shit. So I was like, wait a minute, what? So he was just messing with people and those people not come out and speak on this guy. Fear can get to them. But at some point, it's like, yo, this guy's crazy. He's in like kind of empowered, like a part of the police department. He did all this within his own head, pure not job, but he's not like a killer, like a murderer. He just liked messing with people. And that just killed it for me. I did not expect that film to go that route. I was like, wait a minute. This can't be it, right? But it was. Criminal go finds the girl that she ratted on him or something. I don't really care about that part. He's just, he's let go. Black male by suburban guy. But then they have this other plot thread of the nosy neighbor who almost like catches him when he has the criminal in his side of his house beating him and whatnot. This guy even has like fake knife. So when he, you know, stabs him, it's a fake one and he just knocks him out as well. So it's like, was it all a dream? Was it all just stage? It was all just fake. And then he's gonna do the same thing to this police guy where he starts questioning him. He's on to him so he's like hey i'm gonna invite you over to dinner and then we all know what's gonna happen and then he's walking off the movie it's him walking off with his friend inside his head walking next to him in suits at his cop buddies or attorneys and it's like i don't know man it's like one of those like top 10 twists or top 10 like videos ruins movies this is probably gonna be on those lists because it just killed it for me i was like no why well, he's on a table dance <laughs> That was a ridiculous funny scene and then I don't know they're just like we need something we need something just like a topping we need something extra and we got this we got this he's a special makeup guy and like he just mess with people again like what would I guess since he's like a cop or affiliated with cops and he's kind of like in the higher ups they're afraid that he's just gonna blackmail them hold on never mind take that back here to blackmail this criminal guy yeah never mind take that back whatever I say about the whole people coming out and ratting out on him forget that he's probably gonna blackmail them it's probably bad people going to his house and he just messes with them but what he's doing is also so unmessed 
stuff, but he's not killing them. So that's all I gotta say about this film. I think it's a good premise, it's a very simple one. The film was going along pretty well, and I would have really liked it, but then again, one of those movies with like dumb twists for some reason, for the sake of having a twist, it felt like Saw. There has to be like a twist in every movie now. So in the end, the perfect host, 10 years later, I think holds up to a degree, to an extent, but if you don't like dumb twists for the sake of having a twist, then you probably won't like this movie. So I think it, should I recommend this movie? I think if you just wanna watch something in the background, you should probably watch this movie. But if you weren't already interested in watching this movie, then you should watch it. So it holds up kind of in a way. Yes, maybe no. It holds up maybe. That's my answer. Okay. Yes. You know, screw it. Yeah, whatever. It holds up to an extent. That's all I say. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far. And thank you for watching.